Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Linked HR member, wherever you are in the world. It's always exciting to talk to people all over the world who are members of our group. I'm Dr. Chris Wudermuth, your community chair for one more segment of our Flash Learning series. So today, I still have courage very much at the back of my mind because in a couple of days, I'm going to be traveling to Ottawa, Canada for the International Leadership Association, where I'm presenting about this topic, specifically courage and HR. And I'm also going to be on a panel on diversity and inclusion. So I'm excited about both of these things. And I have two reasons for pride for this particular project on Courage. The first one is that I'm working with a former student, Kim Francis, and a current graduate student, Marsha Kephart. So it's always fun for me to be working with our students and our alumni. And the second source of pride is that for the first time, I'm going to be presenting with my daughter, Maggie Wildermuth, who is a senior at Drake University. So please allow me the indulgence of a proud mama moment. So uh, the study is about courage in the HR professional, or more specifically, the importance of courage in the HR field. And uh, just for starters, I'm going to tell you that I'm really coming late to the to the game. Probably most of you have seen the Game of Thrones, know of the Game of Thrones, many of you have read the Game of Thrones. I'm a latecomer. I just started watching the Game of Thrones series and got really excited about it. It's problematic actually how much um uh, how much joy I am getting from Game of Thrones. But this is a quote from right the beginning of the first book when little Bran tells his father or asks his father if a man can still be brave when he is afraid. And his father answers, that is the only time that a man can be brave. In other words, there is no such thing as courage without fear. For you to be brave, you have to be afraid. So when we talk about courage in HR, we're not talking about courage for the easy stuff. We're talking about courage in the face of moral dilemmas, uh, courage in the face of uh, things that may not be um, ethical in nature, but that could be problematic for the organization in some way. And I'm not going to share the entire thing, even though we have a draft of a paper that I will be happy to share with linked HR members. But this is the most um, interesting theme that we found so far, and that is what we called honest challenge. And that's the idea that basically HR has to be willing to speak truth to their peers, to their colleagues, to other constituents in their organization, and especially have to be willing to speak truth to power. And that does not only apply to situations in which the organization is doing something unethical, it could also apply to situations in which the organization is doing something that is just plain wrong and is not going to work. This is a quote from uh, one of our respondents, without the courage to disagree, propose new solutions, hold a mirror up to current situations and ways of behaving that derail the organization, the human resources professional is an administrator only. And here is the other one. Uh, this is about a situation in which uh, the organization was putting together some sort of a retention plan. And I'm going to uh, uh, point you to the second part of the quote when the person says, after seeing this plan, this step-by-step -step retention project that was awful, uh, we met, presumably the HR professional and some leader who was implementing that, and he asked me what I thought the employee retention problem was. I told him point blank, it's you. So I'm wondering how many of us would have the courage to speak truth to people not only to power, but sometimes to our peers, to our colleagues, to other managers, to people in the organization, as strongly and honestly and forth and as a forthright uh, way as that one. And by coincidence, the topic of courage came up in a recent HR conference, the SHRM, Society for Human Resource Management here in the United States conference in my state of Iowa. And Johnny Taylor Jr., who is the SHRM CEO, 
um, I got this, uh, this quote from his presentation. He said, some of us are so happy to be at the table that we don't fight when we get there. And from my best recollection, um, what Johnny was saying is that it's not enough to get to the table. You have to be willing to speak up when you get there. Otherwise, you're, you're, and now this is me speaking, not Johnny. Otherwise, why do we need to be at the table? Just watch people at the table? Or are we going to actually... Um, trust ourselves enough to speak up. And that got me really curious, that speaking up part. Does HR speak up? Does HR practice honest challenge to everyone in the organization? So here are my two questions for the week. The first question is, in your experience, how courageous is HR, specifically in this area, to speak up? And I have on the screen, in its area of specialty, and I'm going to give a caveat here. First of all, um, it, I'm not implying that HR only needs to speak up in its area of specialty. If we are at the famous table and you see something in the organization that you feel is wrong, you absolutely have the right to speak up, just speak up, not speak up, speak up, just like your colleagues would speak up if they saw something in your area of specialty. However, one thing that has been concerning me um, in, in the many years that I've been around this field is what sometimes I perceive as I don't know, a sense that our specialty is not important, as important as others. We need to be brilliant in everybody else's specialty. Um, heavens forbid, if we don't know everything there is to know about finance or accounting or whatever it is, or production or everything else in the organization. And we do not, however, uh, think anything wrong if the finance VP doesn't know a darn thing about HR. And there seems to be something wrong there. So to clarify before uh, <laughs> I get a lot of angry responses, I'm not saying HR does not have to understand the business of its organization. It absolutely does. All of us, any employee, manager, leader, if you want to call yourself a leader in any role, you need to speak up in your organization. You need to be involved in what makes money for your organization and what supports your organization, even for not-for-profit ones, because they also have to survive. So I'm not saying HR does not have to understand its business. It absolutely does. What I am saying is that HR has a specialty. It is a difficult specialty. It is a challenging specialty. And we ought to honor that specialty. And in our specialty, we should be speaking up even more and not seeing it as somewhat lesser. And I'm curious what your thoughts are about that. Do you feel that sometimes there's that perception that everything else, every other specialty in the organization is more important than the specialty that HR has? So the second question you see on the screen is, do we perhaps lack the confidence or the sense of self-worth, in other words, the value of our own specialty that we need to speak up? Do we perhaps not see ourselves as important enough? And if we don't see ourselves as deeply important, if we don't see our specialty as critical for the success of the organization, how can we expect anyone else to feel that way? So that is my question for the week. Um, I wish you all a very wonderful week. I hope to hear from you about this topic. Please forgive me if I don't respond too fast because I'm frantically getting ready for the conference. And if anybody is going to that conference, please don't forget to send me a note, um, send me a private message, give me your phone, your cell, so that we can connect when we get there. All right. Take care, everyone. Happy week. Happy learning.